about the work that I've been doing under my IISG grant, um, which is relating to embryonic learning and larval memory in lake sturgeon, um, and especially looking at how that might be altered by warming conditions under climate change. So just to give you a little bit of frame of reference, again, this is five minutes, so I gotta go a little fast, but a little bit of frame of reference for embryonic learning. What I mean by that, we give the embryos two cues. We use associative learning, so they have an innate recognition of an alarm cue, a concept specific alarm cue, and they have they have to learn, they have to be trained to recognize a heterospecific predator cue. So that's what I mean by learning. Those would be my conditioned embryos, and then I, of course, always have control embryos as well. Click. Um, so I had three objectives for this project. The first one to be to determine if embryonic learning is possible in Lake Sturgeon. This has been seen in other fish um, and other embryonic animals, but this had not been assessed yet in Lake Sturgeon. So then I also wanted to see how rearing temperature, the water temperature that I was keeping them at, would affect uh, their learning if it did at all. And then I had one more, um, which was to look at the effect of temperature on their larval memory. So I would give them these paired cues only at the embryonic stage, and then I tested them at the embryonic stage right before they hatched, and I would test them again later once they were larvae after they had hatched. One more. Uh, so where I'm at so far, my first objective, I did see evidence that lake sturgeon embryos were able to learn, and we did see their anti-predator response at that stage. So I'll show you embryos in just a second here. Their, uh, their response at the embryonic stage is just to hold still, to freeze. They don't move anymore. And we did see evidence in our conditioned embryos that they did learn and they were able to respond to their predators. My second objective um, was looking at the temperature, and I did not see an effect of temperature on that learning in the embryonic stage. So we did see across um, all of our temperatures, all three temperatures that I tested them at, we did see learning in all of our conditioned embryos. And again, not in any of our control embryos, which is good. So there was a no innate predator recognition, which would have meant there was no learning. So it was good. We saw that how we wanted to. And my Third objective is ongoing. Um, I'm in the middle of analysis for that, so I don't have a conclusion or anything really to tell you about that part quite yet. Um, that will be ongoing and upcoming. Um, no, you're good. And then click one more time. So uh, these are my embryos. These are lake sturgeon embryos. Uh, this was this is video from one of my trials. So I figured I would show this instead of giving you a graph that has way too much stuff going on. Um, so you saw for just a second that one embryo was kind of wiggling or flipping over or whatever. Um, that's what they do when they're in their embryo. They move around a little bit. And then, like I mentioned, their anti-predator response is to freeze or hold still. So that's what they're doing now at this point. They also spend a lot of time freezing and flipping over and everything just throughout their time in their embryo. Uh, I don't remember what treatment this video actually corresponds to, but this is this is what my embryos look like. All right, and to finish up here, I think I'm doing okay on time. I might be a little short even. Um, we are next looking to finish up that larval analysis. I really need to get that part finished up. That's the next big thing for me. Um, if you want to come talk to me about R later and lament uh, the way the separate function is being very mean to me in R, please do that later on. Um, I also have a lot of ideas. There's a lot to be done in the area of embryonic learning overall. Um, it's a relatively new and growing field, so there's a ton that could be done. Um, especially relating to this project, we could look at more extreme temperatures to see if that might elicit a response. Um, we could look at using different predators. We used a non-native rusty crayfish as the predator for this project, but comparing with a native predator could be interesting. Um, or training them on one predator and then presenting them with a different novel predator could be something interesting to look at as well. Or doing similar temperature studies on other species that maybe have different thermal tolerances to see if there might be a different response just in a different species. Uh, I could go on and on. There's a ton that can be done in this area. Um, and then finally, just a shameless plug at the end here, I will be presenting at the Animal Behavior Society in July. So if anybody is gonna be in Portland this summer, uh, come say hi and get a more thorough uh, overview of what all of this project is, hopefully including, or definitely including all of that uh, larval analysis that I'm working on, hopefully finishing up within the next couple of weeks. So that that is uh, what I got.